on live grenades. And we go camping down in Oregon where I, I grew up. And uh, we have a lot of fun. We go blow stuff up. It's pretty cool. You guys think Fortnite's cool. You got nothing on uh, blowing up a Jeep with a grenade. All right, so my turn to have a grenade. I pull the pin, all right? Keep the spoon in there, that's important. And you throw it off the cliff, down the ravine, whatever. When that explosion goes off, is it a slow, drawn out, or is it more like, boom? Yeah, yeah. Sound effects are off. As we say All right. Hey, an explosive has a very definitive start, and then there's a very definitive stop. All right. So we as throwers want to think about that. We need to have, we need to have a very clear cut idea when we start our throw, and we want to have a very you know definitive where we stop our throw. Okay, we don't want to ooze into it, and we don't want to be lazy. We want to, bam, get the ball out. Can we kind of agree on that a little bit? Yes, okay, sure. so I said that the power comes from our core, specifically our core turn, and if we're going to generate power, explosive movement, we got to start suddenly and stop suddenly. Keep that in mind. All right, now, the arm, uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's talk about the core turn for a minute. All right. I'm a big Tom Brady fan. I don't know if I like him or not. I've never met him, to be honest with you, but I know a couple coaches know him. And I'll tell you this, Tom Brady is not a great athlete. He's not, okay? He is, by anybody's standards, an excellent quarterback, right? He's worked incredibly hard. Now, this was him warming up for the Super Bowl last year. Notice what he's doing. What do you see his core doing there? Huh? Sudden, yeah, say it. You did. Oh, but just steal it. It's okay. I'm not talking to him. He's old. I don't want to get in trouble from his mouth. I'm talking what? That's how it works. Steve Coffee. It's okay. All right. Tom Brady is a good guy. You let, you let the 10 year old steal your thunder breath. I'm here. I know. I know you're older. How old are you? 12. 12. See, I said 13. Okay, back to point. What does Tom Brady do there? One more time. Think about this. Now, if you want to emulate somebody, in terms of you know optimize movement. I'm gonna use the word optimize, meaning maximizing your potential. Tom Brady is somebody you want to model yourself after because he's not a great athlete, but he's a great thrower and a great quarterback. Right? So you want you want to why is this not working? There we go. Alright? So keep that in mind. When we throw, we're getting that sudden start, sudden stop. Now, next thing is we're gonna learn that it's about vertical, it's about pelvic rotation. Okay? Now, some of you guys have heard the term, hey, when I go to throw, I'm going to step at my target. I'm going to get movement to my target. I used to teach that. I was taught that way. And about seven years ago, I figured out there's a flaw in that. Right? We actually want to be on a vertical axis. It's about rotating. So it's almost like you're throwing in a barrel. Or back in the day, I would have said phone booth. You guys have no clue what a phone booth is anymore. It's this thing, you know, you used to walk in with a stuck door behind you, it's really tight, and you grab a phone. You have to pretend you're throwing inside a phone booth. So there's no point in stepping forward because I crash in the wall. Now, uh, let me see. Um, any, uh, any Baker Mayfield fans in the house? That's all the love for Baker? <laughs> okay. Well, before he was drafted number one, and before he set a rookie record for touchdowns, I was on Baker Mayfield a couple of years ago. I'd say, hey, this guy's legit. Go check my Facebook page. This time last year, I was saying, he's gonna be, he should be the number one draft pick. He's the best quarterback available. Best quarterback in a long time. I'm going on record. I saw that, so it's kind of good having someone back that I was right. He is legit. Now again, another thing interesting about Baker. Do you think Baker's a great athlete? What was his 40 time in the NFL draft combine last year? He was one of the slowest quarterbacks in the group. He ran like a 4 8 9. Okay. 4 4 7 8 or whatever. He was slow. What was, his, what, was his, what was his bench press reps? He was one of the weakest quarterbacks in the group. You can't run, you can't bench. Comparatively. So is he a great athlete? Not really. Does he have optimized movement skills? Yes. Another Tom Brady. Absolutely optimized movement. Now, Check it out, uh, Baker Mayfield. Big game last year. I mentioned to you that it's about throwing vertically. Watch. Does he go way forward when he goes to throw? If I was to draw a line through him, 
Stays on his axis. Now the camera's moving a little bit, but what I want you to notice is he doesn't waste <coughs> energy going out. He puts all his energy in his pelvic rotation, his core turn, sudden start, sudden stop. We want to emulate that. Okay. The thing is, look at his back foot. Does his back foot come way forward? I've heard, I, it's amazing how these Instagram celebrity coaches I run into, they're always telling their kids to pop over like that. There's no rhyme or reason why to do that. You just disconnect. We'll go into that further tomorrow. But watch great throwers. They keep their back foot connected, right? It's like the punching thing we did with Ben. If I keep connected, I get pelvic rotation, I get more power going forward. So we're gonna break some, you know, some, some kind of misconceptions there, okay? It's about pelvic rotation. All right, last thing. Uh, let's actually show one more here. Uh, Matt Ryan, another guy that I think you guys want to emulate. Uh, he's a big guy, tall guy. But again, the guy that's not a great athlete. Now, I know the last couple years he's kind of struggled. Kyle Shanahan left the Falcons when he became the head coach of the Niners. And I won't mention any names, but Sarkeesian sucks. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's had a tough time. Uh, he's not playing a very quarterback friendly offense. Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry, man. Uh, at any rate, Matt Ryan's a very good quarterback. He's struggling right now because he's not a very user friendly system. but. Watch his mechanics. Again, you'll see that that back foot stays connected. Here's what I want you to see right here. <coughs> Watch his hip right there. Talk about that Tom Brady, you know, type explosion. <coughs> Watch how violent his hip springs up right there. See that? Not a big step. You can't really, you kind of look here. His foot. Is not going, it's not taking a huge step. What it is, is he's really proximal. It's in his core is where it generates his power. Boom. Now, here's what I want you to notice. Watch when he goes to take off, right here. Is this heel still in the ground? Yes. yes. Take note, we'll talk more about that later. Now watch this. As he throws, toe still on the ground, toe still on the ground. Ball's just now leaving his hand. There's the ball. There's his foot. Still on the ground. Still on the ground. Ball's all the way here now. Still on the ground. Now, ball's gone and his foot's just coming up and it's just dragging. <coughs> Keep that in mind. Like that. You saw Baker Mayfield do it. You saw Matt Ryan do it. Okay? Let's talk a few minutes now about the arm. <coughs> Okay, Aaron Rodgers is the best thrower in the NFL. I don't know if he's the best quarterback, but he's the best pure thrower there is. Now, check out his pre-pass. Where's the ball? Is it up at his chin, up at his ear? I'm going to set you up here. Is the ball at his chin or at his ear? Is that up high at all? No. He's a relaxed thrower. Look, the ball is at his chest. His scapulas, his shoulder blades here are very relaxed. We'll talk about that for a second. We're going to really pound you guys to be fluid, smooth, relaxed throwers. Be specific. It's your scapula, it's your shoulder blades. Now here's the thing. I can take my shoulder blades and I can roll them forward. I can pinch them back, right? I can squeeze them together. I can drop them down. I can lift them up. All those are scapula, shoulder blades, those 45 degree rotators. All this is engaged. Great throwers are very neutral. No activation in their, sh in their shoulder blades. Okay. Aaron Rodgers, you can see there, is very relaxed. Now, the next thing in our throw, it's retraction. It's just a subtle move here. He takes those shoulder blades and he just subtly moves them. What he does not do is called abduction. Now, I don't have time to go into it, but abduction is really, really bad. Okay? Here's what I want you guys to do real quick. I want you to take your hand and dig it into your front shoulder right here, throwing hand. So I'm right-handed, so I got my left hand into my left shoulder. Now, with my Shoulder blades relaxed, scapula neutral. As I move my hand in there, you do the same. Roll that elbow, you're throwing on around. See all those muscles are relaxed? Now, as soon as I do what they call abduction, I take my elbow and I raise it above my shoulder. What happens? Keep it loose. Raise it up. What's it do? 
It gets tight. Okay. Now it locks out the distal. It locks out the radial joint there. Okay. And it activates these front deltoid and rear deltoids. So now I'm not smooth. That's why great throwers like Aaron Rodgers don't abduct. Instead of abducting, they retract and externally rotate. So they take the wrist. Track with me. It's a big. Stay relaxed. Slight retraction. We'll go more on the field. And then we're going to move our wrist. We're going to do this. Watch what Aaron Rodgers does. Right there. See that? He moved his wrist. His wrist right here does that. Watch. Now, the other thing is, I don't have time to go into it, but we know that all great throwers <coughs> are symmetrical throwers. Okay, a phenomenon called co-contraction. Equal opposite the body. Always try and balance it out. If you go really strong with this front arm, this back arm is going to be really elongated. Okay? If you're neutral and right here on the front side, okay, you're going to be the same on the back side. We want to strive to be there. If you look at Aaron Rodgers here, okay, he is... Symmetrical. Now, retracts, externally rotates, then we're going to accelerate the elbow through. Notice, he does it, he's his, here's what I'm trying to want you guys to understand. It's all about the elbow in relation to the shoulder. I talk about external rotation and abduction. I don't want my elbow to come above my shoulder. Do it. Okay? I want to go here, and then I'm going to go here, which is exactly what he does. Boom. Okay. Uh, we'll get out in the field and we'll go deeper into this. That's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to hustle up out there. We're going to want you to walk out here. Then you're going to get a slow jog. A slow jog. That's going to be your form. I'll to check it out. You take the hit. Uh, and everywhere in between, San Antonio, uh, they, they come. And what it is, it's a great opportunity for you that, it, you know, raise your hands. And I think I may want to thank all of you. I at least one or two excellent. It's a great opportunity for you to, to get an, at an early age, to get a, to get be on the national stage and compete at the national level. So we will be uh, handing out a few dual invites to this camp. Uh, you know, don't, don't feel bad to get an invite. Uh, uh, you know, we don't celebrate the guys that do. But what we do look for, just so you understand, if you're interested in that, is number one, we do have to have to identify that you know you have some talent that we can work with, right? Eric, he's talented. But more importantly, number two is, uh, are you coaching? Can we explain something to you and you see it to go in the very next rep, go and apply it, so we can see that hey, this kid is worth our invest because he's really working hard. He's plugged in, right? And he has a very coachable spirit and gets better. And number three, you know, are you a grinder? Do you work? Because if you know, he's uh, a very very effective. some talent? Are you coachable? And, and do you have a strong work ethic? If you have those three things or even two of those three things, you know, and, and you're strong into you, we'll give you the invite. So again, we won't celebrate the guys a lot, but uh, you, you'll, get a, you'll get a notice from us uh, if you get an invite to that. If you didn't get an invite and you want to know why, uh, you know, you're, you're welcome to reach up. We, we, we'll give you some feedback on what we feel like you need to be strong to get that invite. So uh, today's about competition. Uh, we're looking for those, those things. Um, we will be going outside. I've checked the weather. Uh, it's not going to rain. It's going to be a little cloudy. It's a little bit wet out there. Uh, but I'm originally from the Pacific Northwest. we got some great ball in Oregon and Washington. Uh, where's Coach Matt? Coach yeah. Matt, do we throw the ball in the rain up there? Oh, all the time, baby. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. And, and do, do coaches across the country lock our guys because they know how to throw in the rain? 
Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They do. So uh, again, Bill Creek and Mills up this house and funds again. Just get out there and compete. All right. You guys heard enough. talking about more grip on the football in the rain especially you don't need the airspace that's a good point <laughs>
Just caught Mike doing something stupid, amazing. He's like, I'm so glad I cut that on film. <laughs> he just got busted. And so what we did is we brought our backup quarterback to make sure we gave him the same opportunities, kind of learning from what happened with him. We're like, no, nah, our backup guy is Damien. Let's see if I see him. He was with the next group. Oh, he's right there at the end, catching the football right now. Okay. But he's a freshman. He's he's going to be a sophomore next year, and he'll be the JV quarterback. But I'm like. Oh, you okay? Come on, Butterfinger. See what I mean? They can't snap him.
Look at Josh Wall.
just a, a handful of kids, 20 or 25 kids out of 200. And they did kind of some kind of unique I've never seen done before. Uh, they brought all of these, these selected kids and uh, they did it one at a time. And I mean, there was, you know, Urban Meyer was watching. There were some big, big dogs there checking this out. You know, so it was, it was, it was pretty significant to be in front of you know, all these, you know, ACC, SEC, Big Ten, Big 12, Pac-12 coaches, all right? And uh, what they did is they actually brought these kids in and they purposely wanted to really disorient them and see how well they responded to pressure situations without being comfortable. So they spun them around, kind of made them dizzy. They had coaches yelling at them. Then the kid would have to run up to the line, grab the ball. Then the coach would say one time, you know, what the downfield read was going to be, what he wanted for like his defender key, what drop work, you know, footwork he wanted to do, whether it's seven step, five step, quick game, whatever. And it was changing all the time. Right, and the kid would have to grab the ball, do the drop, make the read, make the throw. Right, and kids are failing left and right. Nobody's, nobody's doing it. They're just all bombing, right? So I'm thinking, man, I, you know, I can see JoJo get closer and closer. And JoJo's pretty good at this stuff, right? I think it's gonna be his moment. But his turn comes, he gets up, he's busy, you know, he kind of walls up, kind of getting himself bounced back out. Guys are yelling at him, he's focusing on the coach, does it, completely misses it. This is a re this is something he's done this many times. But he was just uncomfortable enough, just, just out of his comfort zone enough, you know, that he missed, just like everybody else. So I'm thinking, oh. I mean, I felt really bad, because I know how great a kid this is, and how, how much he wanted this moment, how hard he worked for it. And I felt exposed to the coach. Quite honestly, I felt like I completely failed him. I mean, I felt, I felt bad. And you know, a couple more that down the road, here comes Zach, I'm thinking, man, if Jojo fell, he'd be really ugly for Zach. He would not do this to his mom. This is mine. Zach's been preparing for this moment his whole life. He loves to compete, and he goes 100 miles an hour. And sure enough, guys know this is his. They do the same thing, you know, he's up there and they yell at him and he's doing his thing and pop, 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 bam! He drains it in front of everybody. <laughs> Whoa! First one again. Do this again! Again, guess what? Same result. Killed it. I knew right then and there how the importance uh, uh, of how you approach the game. Guys, it's not a rocket competitive advantage, right? So each of you will be in a group, you'll get a chance to get your mechanics broken down. You'll see what you're, you're doing well, and you'll see some of the things we need to improve upon to get you greater ball speed, greater, you know, more consistent accuracy and, and control, right? So we'll be going over that. But what we're gonna do real quick here is I'm gonna, again, go over some of those things we talked about all right, yesterday. Now, we went and worked on them last night. We saw them last night. Again, let's talk about some of the things we learned about throwing football yesterday. Go ahead, free associate. Yes, sir. Right here. Why do I keep the ball right here? I'd actually move forward. Yes, Kenny. So you're relaxed. So you're relaxed. What does relaxed mean? Go deeper. Yes, sir. Yeah, but no, no, no. What has to be relaxed? Yeah. The little, like the. Starts with an S. Scap. Scapula. Your shoulder blades, specifically. There we go. I want my shoulder blades relaxed. All right. So again, you know, it's you know, easy to do, but 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 I mean, simple, but not super easy. All right. So scapula means I'm not bringing my shoulders forward. I'm not pinching my shoulder blades and bringing my shoulder blades back. I'm not raising them. I'm not lowering. I'm very neutral. Okay. So we have to learn. Now, yesterday when you're doing that five cone drill, I make you do one cones one, two, three, and four. We talked about disassociation. You guys remember that? Can you remember, tell me what disassociation is? Yes, sir. Bang, nailed it. What does that mean? Somebody unpack that for me. Yeah. Okay, so my rib cage moves independently than my hips. And this is relaxed, scapula neutral, everything's relaxed, okay? And this is on. What does this on mean? What do we learn about that? Yeah? Um, That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Tensegrity. What is tensegrity? Yeah, come on. Oh, this is a big one. Go ahead. Yeah, you can. Inner tension through my hips, glutes, my inner unit core, boys up, right? Which keeps my feet locked in, which is very, very important for power and consistency. Does Tom Brady have good tensegrity? Yes. Tom Brady, good athlete? No. No, is he a mobile quarterback? Yes. Because his ability to move dynamically and efficiently, stabilize very quickly, and get rid of the ball. 
Okay, he's not fast, but he moves fast as a quarterback. Can you guys learn to do that? You did. I saw you guys really improving that phone call drill. Okay, so lower body stability through inner unit core activation to tense segregate. Okay, we disassociate so our upper body is very relaxed. That's a lot of deep end stuff, but we kind of get that, right? Anybody have any questions on that? All right, what else did we learn? How about our arm path? What, what, what's, what's our arm got to do? Yeah. Gotta keep the wrist locked. How do I, where do I start with my wrist? Yeah? 45 degrees down. 45 degrees down, but man, I'm impressed you remembered that. Okay, yeah. Basically, just make a fist like you were gonna punch. Now, do I move my wrist at all? <coughs> no, good, we got that solid. No, keep the wrist locked the whole way. All right, so let's, we're gonna, we're gonna break into groups here in just a minute, but I'm gonna, we're gonna, everybody's gonna take a quick look at these. Now, pay attention, because we're gonna be rotating today, and everybody's gonna get a chance to go over their film. rather than reading this guy here, they're locking with the backside tackle, and they're gonna read like this wheel back or, or, or whatever clip, conflicted defender they want. So what Carson's doing is he's reading here. Now you guys have to tell me, do you think in this situation you have to have 10 segregate? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, I want you to watch how well Carson does this. He's pretty good, all right? I'm gonna, just watch, I'm gonna just watch this play full speed one time through. Is that a good play? Yes. Yeah. Now just watch his movements here a little bit. Does he rotate? Yes, he does. Yeah. Do you get a sudden start, sudden stop? Yes. Does he press his chest? We just talked about staying vertical. Some of you guys really struggle, and you'll see it on your film today. When you throw, you're still old school, all right? You're still kind of the muscle ball, rather than your big muscles, usually. You're pressing your chest and ripping down with your arm, okay? And I've told a few of you guys, hey, keep your chest over your rib cage and over your hips. You don't need to press your to stay vertical and rotate. Tell me if Carson does that, or does he lean forward? He stays vertical, all right? Now, some of you talked about, we talked about, you know, uh, some coaches I know teach, you know, over rotating, meaning bring the back foot way through. Now, the, the, the foot will come through. You know, you know, I'm not saying you keep the back foot back, but you want to keep that foot anchored as long as you can. Watch here. Does he keep his back leg in the ground? Yeah. And look at the way the ball jumps. Now, what I'm going to give you guys a little, a little lesson here on real quick is why we need, to, we, we need to have the sudden stop. And how keeping that foot in the ground helps us have a sudden stop. All right, if Christian there... Raise your hand, Christian. Christian and I are in a car, right? And I'm being inappropriate. I'm driving way too fast. And I'm being further inappropriate by not having my seatbelt in, right? Christian's sitting next to me, but he has a seatbelt on. Track with me here. And I'm not paying attention. And, you know, I'm doing something dumb. And we hit a telephone pole. Kind of a morbid thought, but just track with me. Christian's in his seatbelt, right? What's going to happen to him? He's going to stop. I'm not in my seatbelt. The car's going along, I'm like, bam, it hits the telephone pole. What am I going to do? Yeah. I'm flying through the windshield. Now you guys all have that visual. Great. Our arm has to do that. We want to generate power, but then we have to stop so the arm accelerates through. So if I'm a guy that brings you know, my whole body through, do I ever have that stopping point or that place where the arm can accelerate? No. no. So while the arm, we definitely, after we get rid of the ball, my foot comes through, but man, I, 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 want to, I want to have that stop. Now, equally, just like the back foot, you know, not coming through is kind of a stopping of our, our that, that Tom Brady core turn we have. Okay, my front side is also a break. Track with me here. If I swing this front arm open, or if I'm a guy that doesn't eat the cheeseburger, I rip my elbow up like this, or I pull across like that, Am I, getting a, am I getting a sudden stop in my front side? No. So the back side kind of stops my hip from coming so far. But then think about this. My arm comes here, and then it stops, and my, my, that wind breaks the front side, so my arm can accelerate through. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so now that I give you that, let's go back and watch that. This last clip of Aaron Rodgers that we watched the other day, I really want you to watch this front arm. But this thing, the phenomenon of co-contraction, we talked about last night before we went out, I talked about it again in the mechanics speech. 
Watch his arm. Okay, so right here again, retraction. Ever show me what retraction is? Subtle. Are we lifting up at all? Right here. Then we're rotating. Again, not overdo it. We don't do anything, we don't overdo anything. Everything's subtle, minimal movements. That's efficiency. Then as we rotate, externally rotate, bring the elbow through. You can see Rogers does it here. Now right there, again, he is equal opposite. But here's where the magic happens. He uses this front arm to break so this arm can accelerate through. Equal opposite. Now this elbow is starting to accelerate. There's the part where it's uh, zero position, where the elbow now is in front of the shoulder. The rib cage has turned, and he has rotated, and now as he's turning, he's got his elbow position where he can fire the tricep, flexion the wrist, and everything's in front of his rib cage. He comes that sudden stop, the ball jumps. Okay? But here's what I want you to notice too. Look here. There's air there, there's air there. Remember I talked about eating the cheeseburger? Is Aaron eating the cheeseburger? Yeah, talking in the mic, whatever it is you want to do, okay? So now, watch this. As the arm fires, he accelerates through the extension. Look at the arm. Still there. Still there. Still there. Fully extended now. The ball's long gone, and he's still here. Now, yes, it slipped a little bit, but you understand where Now, first thing we're going to do, we're going to check your movement skills. we got to be efficient movers, right? So we're going to see whether you're a distal mover or proximal mover, meaning whether you reach or whether you burst. And, and we're working on this, okay? Own this stuff. This is the stuff that'll help you better. So the first thing, working with Micah, all right? I'm gonna draw a line for you, buddy. And what I wanna see is, a lot of guys will initiate movement with the reach step, all right? That's, it's, it's, it's really indoctrinating, but, but the, the, the more efficient way to move, again, is to fire this hip to propel yourself, right? Like we did the cone, you got that? All right, so first thing I'm looking at is, that's pretty good, Micah, that's really good. You've gotten better at that. Now, continue to push yourself though. You're, 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 you're on your hips there. Is, would you say that right there his glutes are loaded or his knees way over his toes? Much improved, man. I see it working. Let's get better at this. Keep going with it though. You need to work on this a couple hours a day. So here's what I'm going to and, and Mike has gotten a lot better. What are you looking for, buddy? My shoes. Your shoes. I think I smell them. Just kidding. Okay, so. Uh, Micah used to do a lot of movement for never burst. Better. Now, see, he's, he's firing his glute right there. See where he fires his glute there? Right there is where he moves. Okay, fire it sooner. Think about, you guys understand about firing your glute? Wake up. It needs to be interactive. Because you're all going to get sucked in. What do you mean by firing your glute? What do you mean by that? Huh? Yeah, so when you, when you, if you, were to, if you were to stand up, right, and I was to have you go like on the cone drill, right, do you reach or do you propel your whole body? You propel your whole body. How do you propel your whole body? You fire your hip and your glute, right? You drive into the ground and that propels the body. So what you have to learn to do is, as you get in the ball, is, is just initiate firing that glute that much sooner. That's what great movers do, they're just very efficient. They do it quick, right? So it's better, way better. I appreciate the effort. Keep going with it. Keep going with it. Okay? Now, the next thing, we want to fire good, and we want to have a shallow crossover. The reason is because we want to get this foot in the ground right now so we can slide the hips. It's a little long. Now, here's the thing. We, gotta, we, we have to land, stabilize, and this hip has to be behind this foot. So you land it tight like that? So I know you guys, a lot of you guys want to watch film. I'm not saying on Mike, but I worked Mike a little bit, and he did really well in the dual force this last year. He's a dude, okay? But you want to just be told, yeah, great, I'm awesome. That's, that, that's reaffirming to you, but that's not actually getting you better, right? So Micah does this really well, but I got to get him better. Micah, you're still taking too big a crossover step. And then you got you to stabilize, you know, in that pass profile. You got you to gotta throw the ball with your hips but you know, between your heels, shoulder width apart. You throw the ball from shoulder width right here. Okay, it's because you're taking too big a crossover step. <laughs> Let your hips slide. All right, so now what it is, you're, gonna, you're just gonna reach a little bit. Now, as I draw a line here, okay. See how, you, see how you're moving that foot? 
not necessary. Okay, it, that's kind of old school habits. You got to get out of that a little bit, right? Because the problem is, is again thinking what you know and about equal opposite. All right, when I go big foot here, I'm going to go big hand here. So I only got to be equal opposite of the upper body. I'm equal opposite of the lower body. All right. So see how you're still kind of bringing both elbows up. look at some, some primary movement there between you and Aaron. Balls down, elbows up. He stays linear. He externally rotates. Now you come there, but the difference is Aaron's a few frames ahead of you. So I mean, I know it's no fun being fair to Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he's a dude, but if you're going to emulate, you want to keep working your mechanics like you have. So I got to give you so so here do you have a notebook? Phone. Okay. So you have to land stabilized. How do you land stabilized? Shorter steps, slide the hips. Everybody understand that? Am I talking too fast? It's too early in the morning. Got to wake up. This is how you own it. Okay. You got to slide the hips so you land stabilized. So tomorrow I'm going to film you again. I want to see you work on this, Micah. Have, have a little have a, have a little more stabilization. Okay. And then start to really control what that front arm does. I'm okay with a little of external rotation here, but that's, that, that's still a lot. Now, what he does do really well, he's got very good rotation. See his hips coming through? Good job, man. And great extension. Stabilize on the front leg here. Stabilize the front leg, and then really power through it. Does he, does he get a sudden stop? Yeah. Okay, so you understand what I'm asking you to do? No more of this, less of it, a little more of, of, you know, really just think about, don't think about throwing the ball, think about that front arm. You're doing this, you're kind of doing this, a little more of that, all right? And you don't need to take a big step. Get out of the habit of taking that big step. All right, can you work on that today? All right. same depth. You're not shallow in your depth because you're you're moving efficiently. So even if you do have to take a bigger step, you gotta let that back step carry a little bit more so you land stabilized. Does that make sense? Okay. Set up. Now nobody move your hallway. Where are you set to throw? Based on your hip? Okay. Where are you set to throw? Inside of him. Inside of him. Look, you know this, and it's inside of him. Oh, better? Inside, inside, inside to the linebacker. Slightly inside. Okay?
flown in. Uh, we got a lot of them. All right, so you guys are all going to get a lot of uh, attention, and uh, we're going to go to work and uh, help you guys. And I'm not just talking about quarterbacks, but we got some great guys. Uh, uh, Coach AJ, the running backs guy, uh, he was pretty humble. Uh, he he, is, he parts a lot of kids in the Pac-12. He uh, does a lot of stuff at the University of Oregon. He still has alumni. He does a lot of stuff with all the athletes at USC. And uh, continues to be coached over. Uh, it is a junior college, uh, uh, you know, very successful coach there in athlete development. So, so, so we're here to help. So uh, let, let's pray about it. If you have a notebook, go ahead and uh, grab that, open up that notebook and start taking notes. If you don't have a notebook, uh, you know, let that be a reminder that in the future uh, you want to start taking notes, all right? As an elite level athlete uh, pursuing excellence, you, you want to frame out and start building a roadmap for yourself. So the guys that have been here before know to have a notebook, all right? Good. Uh, so, how is it that we're able to help athletes get from here uh, all the way to here, right? It, it's, it's not magic. There's, uh, there's no, uh, no magic dust we sprinkle on you to help you. Uh, we go to work and we do a fully comprehensive program. Now, fully comprehensive is just a fancy word for this, body, mind, spirit. We address the whole athlete and we're going to push development uh, in, in all three of those verticals, right? You know, for the body, uh, you know, we are, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to help you with, uh, with movement strategies, all right? We're going to help you generate explosive, explosive uh, movement, all right? How to stabilize, but again, whether you're a quarterback, uh, receiver, uh, you know, running back, uh, you know, how to, how to generate, you know, more power in your throw and in, in your movement. Uh, for the mind, you know, we do, the quarterbacks, we do a lot of stuff on, on you know, developing vision. Uh, we certainly teach you more about the game. Uh, to slow the game down for you a little bit, you know, raising your football acumen. And, uh, and quite honestly, you know, we have to address, you know, the spirit, the soul of the athlete. You know, at the end of the day, uh, <laughs> there's, there's certain things that, that we know an athlete has to exhibit if he's going to be successful, you know, and that has to, that has to come from within. So uh, we're going to take just a couple minutes before we head out on the field, all right, and we're going to talk about that, about, about what makes you tick. I'm going to ask a couple questions. I'm not going to preach at you. I'm just going to have fun with you. And I'm going to share with you, uh, you know, some of the things I've learned. I'm, I'm a former, uh, again, college coach. Here. I don't want to brag. I just want you to, to be able to learn to, as we give, give and take here, that you can trust that, that I'm a guy that did help a lot of athletes out. All right? So another show of hands, just curious. All right? I do this every camp. How many of you guys have dreamed about or set goals or, or thought about, you know, maybe playing college football? That's a big one. Yeah, okay, look around. Good, awesome. We're going to have a great camp. We've got a lot of kids, again, that I call out are pursuing excellence. That undertaking of playing college football is, 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 is going to take a Herculean effort. It's a big deal. It's not easily accomplished. It is, it is absolutely achievable if you're willing to, to do the work and do some things, right? So uh, we help a lot of kids play college football. You know, we don't guarantee anything, but we help a lot of kids. More often than not, you know, as we get college coaches that are approaching us, well, again, it's mainly quarterbacks, but certainly receivers, running backs as well. They're always, they're always asked us the same thing, right? And what I want to do is start by framing out to be one of the most common things now, in particular, I'd say last three, two, certainly this last year, that college coaches are asking, all right? Here's what they're asking. Can I trust this kid? No joke. More and more coaches are just saying that he was purposely willing to endure the most horrific way there was to die. For his cause. Now let's just back that up a little bit, Coach. That's pretty heavy stuff. Yeah. Just in this, that if you really want to be an impact guy, if you really want to want to want to be a, a person that, 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 that makes big, big impact, you have to understand this. You're gonna have to suffer a little bit. That's that, that's the reality. And, and you know, rather than running from it, if you just embrace it and then realize that, listen, I only have so much personal bandwidth. I only have so many things that I can invest myself in. And all of a sudden, if we as athletes, we as, as men, start looking through the lens that I'm not going to commit myself to something unless I'm really willing to suffer. See, it's easy to say I love something. Okay? A lot of you guys love Xbox. Or no, what is it now? Fortnite. I actually saw that for the first time. What an amazing game. I'll never start that game. I never get off. All right? In all serious, it's pretty cool. Some of you guys say, I, I, yeah, I, I did, Mike. I finally checked out Fortnite over the new year. <laughs> So anyways, hey, it's easy to say I, I love something, right? I love this, I love that, I love that. But when you flip the script and you say, am I willing to suffer for this? All of a sudden, it gets real and hurt, right? There's certain 
things in your life that you busy yourself doing, right, and you, you say that you, you love them, am I willing to suffer for those things? Right? Now, those of you that raise your hand and said, again, I want to play college football. You, you, you're, you're embarking on a pretty significant journey. Right? You are. You're pursuing excellence. Right? You're going to have to suffer just a little bit. But there is something very redeeming. There is something very authentic, pure, about suffering just a little bit. See, society today doesn't want to suffer. We want to make it easy. We want to be highly comfortable. And I know that that's, that's mainstream. That's what everybody's saying. But, but there's only, you know, 118 Division I football quarterbacks a year. You know, there's only about uh, 227, 228 Division II and FCS quarterbacks a year, right? And we can kind of go through that. There's those people that are willing to commit themselves at a very high level. They're willing to suffer just a little bit. But I don't want you to, I don't want you to fear of that suffering because once you get into it and realize this is well worth it. I, I, I am, just a little bit of suffering goes a long way. But if you want to be a part of a significant cause, just understand that, that you're going to have to suffer just a little bit. All right? It's hard work. All right? So, uh, understand it's not about you. Unlock the personal power and things you'd be mentally tough and do great things by looking to serve people around you. Understand that you got to move the chains. Okay? you you got, you got to go. you got to get, it's a grind. Embrace that grind. And number three, realize that I'm going to have to suffer a little bit. And, 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 and you know, I'll, I'll comment on this a little bit further. You older guys, how many guys are going to be juniors or seniors? Raise your hand if you're going to be junior or senior year. Okay, life's coming to you really fast. Your generation is incredibly capable. I'm actually one of the guys that believes there's great hope in the future. You guys are, uh, you, you guys have more ability to problem solve and do things than a lot of generations before you, right? But you guys are also very distracted. You guys have a lot of options. You guys have way more options than I or your parents had or your grandparents had. All right, so I'm gonna challenge you guys as you start approaching adulthood and graduating and moving on, maybe fall college football, whatever it is, okay, you're gonna have to be a little more selective with the time and where you invest yourself. And it's just real simple. If you're not willing to suffer for something, you probably shouldn't be doing it. I mean, if, if it's something that you're pursuing, if you're not really willing to suffer for it, then you're kidding yourself, you don't really love it, right? Because I mean, if you really are passionate about something, you're gonna suffer. So think about that today just a little bit. All right, uh, that's it, man. Preaching's over with, okay? Well, I'm gonna really, actually, you know what? We're gonna uh, stand up here in just a second. I'll give you the word. We're gonna start moving the transition, look for you to fill. I'm gonna give you a little bit on, on some, some primary movement stuff. Well, running back, you have to jump cut from the A gap to the B gap. Or you have to shed a tackle. Quarterback, we just talked about it. You gotta generate power in your throw. We have to be stabilized. Not enough athletes today understand stability. And it's a very rudimentary thing that will yield you big, big things, a measurable difference in your play to understand stability. So here we're gonna have a quick lesson on stability. All right, everybody stand up real quick. Go ahead and spread your chair apart. Okay. Get it, Damien. Yeah! 
Kid. Coach is standing out on the field and the kid just sitting in the you know where. <laughs> He's having to walk it off. Set it with tomorrow, man. We no, just got to no. stay busy. Okay, line up. Let's get a little picture. Hey, on the old guys in the back, coaches on the side, young guys front. Oh, the camera's yeah. gonna be right here. Hurry up. Let's go, bud. Guess 
Here we go. Look at the cameras. Give me your fifth grade. Live in the moment. Go compete. Great job. Thank you. 